Okay. Three, two, one. Yo, welcome to the best podcast that you should be watching with like your girl, your man, your friends, your parents. <laughs> we don't discriminate here. Welcome to Ball for Six Podcast, episode four. And you better have watched episode three because you know who we back with. Back with Tando and Dumero. Just swap the words around because I got a bit confused there. But yeah, man, yes, Tando, Instagram, yes, Dumero, Instagram. Hosted by the one and only, now Shangin. Yo, man. <laughs> your man's, your man's worst fear, because I'm your girlfriend's side chick. Holy shit. But yeah, man. But like, I hope you watched that last episode, because you know that this guy caused a lot of rackers. This guy said a, lot, a whole lot of offensive stuff. That's why I keep saying the disclaimer at the start. Please, please just listen to it, because this guy talks nonsense. This guy just says a whole lot of crap. So like, we introduce yourself. Let me think about my words here because apparently I'm not the best on the mic. Uh, first, I want to leave this picture. I want to leave this picture as a starter. <laughs> our, our day. Something wrong with this guy. Now that that's out of the way. What did you ask me? Could you see if you see something? Hi guys, I'm Tumelo. Uh, if I offended anybody in the last episode, I would like to say it's all about perspective. It's not, it's not even, you know, offense is never given, it's only taken, you know? So uh, I would like to apologize for your lack of understanding uh, for the things that I said, but... In general, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's the same. Yeah. In general, uh, yeah, we're fucking back at it. You know, you're chewing loud as shit, but it's not gonna bother me at all. It's not like I have anger issues or anything. Uh, Hi guys, I am Tyler, and welcome back to the vault. Uh, you know, to Did you see my comment? Under <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Did you see? Because you didn't respond. Wait, you didn't respond to my comment. Yeah. I said it's Vault 46 till we 69, right, guys? And why didn't you say anything? But Tando, you had you understand it, though, right? Because you commented, so I know you support it. You just watch me all that shit. Um, hope you enjoyed the last one. Yeah. Let's get started. And we got. Well, we're not gonna say ghost lady, but like. A ghost. What's a ghost in Zulu? What's a ghost in Zulu? Spawa. Mfaz with Spawa. Behind the camera. We got. We got Tapi. Yeah, she she the one keeping us in check because I don't know, man. The man just says a lot of nonsense. Yeah, mostly this guy. All of them are watching How? I haven't said anything bad since like episode two, bro. Episode one. Episode one, actually. But yeah, man. Um, on that fact, how was your week? Um, it was good. A lot of events happened, like after the episode drop. In terms of. In terms of. What I can say is, we are just. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Getting better. Oh, you meant that. Oh, I thought your situation. Oh my god. Whatever the situation was that happened after the podcast. Oh, yeah, guys. Nothing bad happened. I can't really say anything bad. But just feedback from people that watched the episode and yeah. uh, interested. Yeah. Because, like, I really like monument not monumental but like one point that stood out was that people were saying that like in terms of like what we were talking about they really placed a lot of emphasis on the SA fashion brand thing that we were talking about that in a sense fashion brands in SA 
I don't want to say they copy and paste. There's not a lot of originality. Yeah. I mean, like, like it, it, I feel like more of the originality doesn't come from the designs. It's more the aesthetic of the brand that really sells it, yeah. that takes it further than what people actually perceive it as. And I feel like that's actually something that is more, like fundamental in anything that you do if you're on social media. The, the image, like posting on IG, you have to create the aesthetic that you want from the get-go, or like you can develop it, but there has to be something that people know you for. You know, the type of photography, the type of outfits you wear, the type of music that you wear, and stuff, or music that you wear, for, like, music you listen to, if you like this guy. But like, it's all about creating that image, and that image, <laughs> that image is necessarily your selling point to other people, whatever you're trying to do, whether you're doing it for fun, or you're doing it for money, yeah. and the image, the PR behind everything that you do is the essential part of necessarily getting you forward. And it's like, for instance, with Sandu, for instance, go through like his page, you just see this, there's an image behind it. Like Mato, for instance, go to Mato, yeah. you see everything, you see how the, he takes his pictures and yeah. everything, lifestyle, it's just, it's all cohesive, it gives off that Sorry, if you look at like the Mello's vlogs. That's not. I was gonna get to you. <laughs> Let's not even talk about me because I'm very irrelevant in this conversation. But we didn't say anything. That's the problem. I was gonna That's get to you. That's the problem. I was gonna well, get to you. Why don't you say something? Why John? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like. I don't want to, okay, let me, let me be, let me, let me correct my mistake. Tan, this guy, I'm going to keep calling you Tan. Don't even, don't even. Let me just call you Maverick, okay? If you look at Maverick, for instance, if you look at Maverick, Insta, he doesn't post a lot of himself, but when he's designing, there's a certain type of aesthetic that you can witness. Same with like Wetsu that we're talking about. Him as a graphic designer, you get the feel of the type of, art that he's making. Same with the manner. It's all about, I feel like sometimes we always are harsh on ourselves because perhaps you're not getting the, the numbers that you want. And sometimes it's important to understand that your aesthetic isn't what the ordinary person wants. So it takes time to actually garner that audience that's actually want to follow and be invested in everything that you do. But I sometimes I also had to tell myself that like I'm gonna have to make a path for myself, but it's gonna take time because I have to create something that people are going to enjoy, but at the same time not taking the authenticity and the enjoyment for myself because I don't wanna do something that it's not mm, for me. Because like you become a slave. Exactly. Because I feel like most times people on social media have this thing of okay cool i have to sell this picture of myself because people aren't gonna like it and i feel like that's the thing that harms you because you're not being true to self and it's like behind the scenes you're a completely different person like you go out every like on your instagram you're posting pictures every friday but like you can't even make eggs <laughs> what <laughs> i mean there are people like that would you, would you would you say you're a different person from your social media at the start, yes. Right now. Right now, no. So everything is on your social media right now. That's... Yeah, like me posting those weird yeah, ass pictures that you see. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you. Don't know your shit. I don't know there's something. No, my stories, but I post like these weird oh, pictures right now. Yeah, oh, the stuff that you keep there. Yeah. People don't know that you're actually weird. Yeah. As fuck. Yeah. So it's like I, I want to be myself. You know. What's up? Take the mic out, how do you? Yeah, I, I want to be myself, you know? Like, I always have this thought of, like, wherever, whatever I do, I don't want to lose myself in it because I want to fit into a certain regime that's supposedly the accepted standard. Of course, there are standards of operation. Like, you can't be an idiot and just, like, you know, do crazy stuff. But I always want my image to, to stand true despite what I do. Like, if you know that I do graphic design, there's a certain type of formula that I follow that like you can see it it's in every picture, like there's a certain type of I don't know, color grading and like a certain overlay 
that's like my thing that I enjoy because I'm not gonna say, oh, no, I'm not gonna dress like this because you know people don't like the way that you dress and stuff. I'm not gonna dress, I'm not gonna dress like I don't care. I'm not like some other people out here who be buying baggy pants but don't even enjoy wearing baggy pants. If you wanna wear skinny jeans, wear them. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying in general, bro. Like I am saying in general. I, no, cause I I don't wanna say I know someone. But you can get to. Can I ask you something? Yeah. What do you say about the people that uh, let's say you dressing the way you wanna dress to be yourself, but then they wanna dress like you? I feel like also me myself. I've taken a lot of stylistic inspirations from a lot of people mainly oddly like old sweatshirt like i like the, the freelance look that he has it, it, it seems comfortable and it's like with me i always have base layers that i like they look you know not all that and like i feel like it's not bad to want to dress like someone else but always be you in a sense whatever works for you let it work and combine that with whatever you're taking inspiration from. Because I feel like you don't always wanna say you wanna dress like, I don't know, Cardi, and you don't have the money to dress like Cardi. Now you're putting pressure on yourself to look like this certain person just because you wanna look cool, but at the same time, you're not comfortable. You don't have the means to be like that 24-7, you know? You asked me if you want to add break. An ad break? You think we should have an ad break? Listen, listen, say we, nah, you gotta, you gotta hear me out, you can't just, this is what I'm saying. You see how we have regular episodes? Imagine if we had ad breaks. And then, like, a, like the clip cuts and then, you know, the song plays and then we back at it again. After we, you know, had a, had a sip of scotch and You know brand. how we're gonna have ad breaks? What? Continue sharing the podcast, yeah. subscribe, like it, so like we can get ads. Get yeah. money and you can get everything that's not that kind of ad. That's what he needs to make a guy. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's real. He's he real. wants a mic. That's why. Right. Yeah, that's why. Right. I want what? A mic. Okay, let me ask you this question. It's something that like I actually did want to ask you about. Do your aesthetic, how do you actually come about developing your aesthetic? <clears throat> that aesthetic that like you put through in your editing, your art that you create, and yourself. Particularly, how did Dumelo Maverick actually come about? Are we about to get real now? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking that question. Um, you guys are gonna get my fucking nerves because I don't even say shit yet, and you already. But to answer your question. It's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Um, I'm not happy every day. <laughs> Let me run that back. That's not what I was trying to say. But, okay, now I'm actually being serious. You're referring to like the dark, stop fucking laughing. Tell me stop laughing. you bro? No, because I, I, I thought about it in my brain. I'm like, what the fuck am I saying? I'm probably going to get... Let me know, let me know if we can get to that. But um, I, my aesthetics, ah, shit, dude, I don't even understand your fucking question, to be honest. Why does it look dark? Is that, is no, that way? like, how does one come about developing that oh. aesthetic for themselves and settle on your okay. satisfaction? I wouldn't be able to, to tell you how you can do it, but I can tell you about how I do it. Uh -huh. I just listen to music, bro. I literally just listen to music, and for me, what I get from music uh, initially just creates like the base layer of what I'm going to do. So if I'm not feeling the best today, I'm gonna listen to like a pretty calm song just to put me in a, you know, in an easy state. And I open my laptop and say, like, okay, let's see what design we can make this time. And then it's gonna be something that relates to my emotion at the time. So if you see a very complex design with a shit ton of layers and crazy colors, it's because at the time when I created that. I was probably feeling complex and complicated and you know everything was just weird. So every single emotion is basically put into every single design. Hence, you know, the aesthetic in, in general. That's why some designs are color, others are just like one color, others. I think how we express our art in general is just 
it's a reflection of who you are. My stuff is just, all of it, it's just a reflection of who I am. If you look at my videos, apart from the graphics, that entire film, um, what would I call it? Film aesthetic, or the, how I shoot it, how slow it is, how fast it is, the color grading, all of that. Dude, it's just emotions, man. Like, I really don't know how to explain it, but that's just what I feel. In an answer to the question, what's the one emotion? Um, we often see people say emotions tend to be a good thing, tend to be a bad thing. So how necessarily do you say does one balance it? Because we can often get lost in the emotion. Sometimes the emotion is the driver. But like, how does one actually utilize it? Ooh, understand the emotions. I, like I said, so for you, I can't tell you how to understand your emotions, how to balance your shit. I can tell you only about me. Everything, dude, everything I feel, just design. Like everything. If you're happy, design that shit. If you're sad, design that shit. Because I take it as this is my fucking life. Like this, the things that I create, like that's, that's genuinely me. So some days I'm not going to wait for a feel good moment. I'm going to feel like shit and I'm still going to make something. So. I don't know, I guess what keeps me balanced is to keep doing something while I'm feeling like that. It's better than just sitting down and feeling sad and, you know, you can't, yeah, like you just don't got shit to create or whatever. I just put every every single feeling, every bit of emotion into my work. So, see, I don't, I can't, I can't tell you how to balance your emotions. You gotta get yourself in check. You gotta fix yourself. You know? Wouldn't you, well, would you say, if you go about that way, you're going, or you're using a motor that's, Dependence on on, on, on you always feeling certain emotion. Why can't you just create for the sake of creating? For me, I can't do that. Like if I if I'm just neutral and I create something, I don't know. It just doesn't hit the same as when you know it's like oh, I was happy when I made this, or I was sad when I made this. If I just make it neutral, I'm not even creating. You know, when I'm actually not feeling anything, when I'm just feeling okay, I'm outside, dude. I'm fucking riding a bike, or I'm skating, or I'm swimming, or I'm hiking or some shit, you know, like I'm doing random white people stuff, so I'm not, I'm not like, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna... <laughs> Good seeing you. You know what the fuck I said, I, I, I said something real, but seriously, I'm not gonna, um, shit, you get what, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I don't think I need to emphasize, I'm kind of out of words right now. Okay, I have a question, say, hypothetical scenario, man. Mm. Let's say you're put in a position where uh, you need to produce something, man. And, oh, and I'm not feeling anything. Yeah. I think the feeling of I need to make something is going to come. Like it's going to be very real. And then, oh, let me say the pressure of, okay, now I need to perform. Because they want to see something, so I need to make something for them. And I'm not feeling the way that I would usually feel when I make something. I'm still going to do something. So much so that I'm gonna make mistakes while I do it. And then I think within the mistakes that I make in the design, like I'll make so many designs out of, if I post two designs, best believe I made six, True. but everything else I scrapped. So for me to, uh, I guess that repetitive motion, or if I'll call it that, I end up finding perfection in all of the mistakes that I made. Like I pick out layers and elements from each design and I combine them all to make one perfect one, it's like, okay, cool, there, we did it. So if you ask me to make something right now, I definitely will pick up my laptop and I'll try to make something, but if it's not perfect, I'm not giving it to you. Like, if I don't, if I don't feel like, okay, this makes the cut, I'm not gonna give it, I'm gonna try to do it over and over and over until I eventually get into that flow state and that drive of, okay, we're fucking working, and then you make something amazing. So, yeah, that's how I go about my shit. How's it for you then? Let me sip my coke right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, I understand, I understand my, my, my process has been different. Um, depending on what I'm doing, I use different <clears throat> tactics or methods. For example, in terms of Video, this is different from in terms of design. A video, I can do like a, cha a chaotic video where it's like a lot of videos, a lot of different times. Then, in terms of design, graphic design, I'm more on the minimal side, but I can do chaotic and I like a lot of colors. I like a lot of colors. 
So what I did is I, <coughs> I, I mix a lot of elements depending on what's needed, you know. So I look at the research. I'm very intentional with what I put into the design, whether I'm thinking about it consciously or un unconsciously, you know. Uh, I, unlike other people, I'm like, like working off emotion because I feel like you end up being depending on that and that's where you get like get stuck in a creative, you know, like depression or whatever it is. Because now if you're not creating something when you're happy, you're gonna create something when you're sad. And if something doesn't come out as good as you were sad last time, you were trying to match the sad to create the same type of thing. I disagree strongly. Yeah. 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 Take a walk. I just stop. What? I just stop. Like, I haven't. It's always very clear. The last thing I posted. What is September? Pro oh, September. The last thing I probably posted was either in June or beginning of July and it's not that I've had creative blocks it's more like I'm no more as a I don't want to say freelance like I don't just have ideas popping into making designs like that like at the start bro, I'd make probably six designs in a week and I'd post that like literally every day I'd post a new artwork maybe like this 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 and that but it's more like now it's more like whenever I, I want to create and I can't, I try to take inspiration from anything, whether it's what I see, what I listen to. Because like a lot of the stuff that I've created recently, it's really helped by music. Mm -hmm. Like mostly songs that help me imagine things. Like, <laughs> no, like not just, not like the feeling of the song, literally what the song says. I would want to like make an artwork about it like for instance like listen to like action bronson action bronson says a lot of things that for me tend to be visual like i visualize a lot of the things that he says and i want to make it so i feel like that's what helps me it's like i take inspiration from other places i take a break perhaps my brain is too tired to think at the time because for me graphic design is flipping a lot of work bro. it's a lot Especially. So basically the base of what you're saying is when you can't when you can't create anymore, you just take a break. Yeah. Yeah, you just take a break, fucking calm your brain. You know, you'll you'll definitely find that inspiration again, but if something is just it's too much for you right now, like if your if your brain is just it's processing too much, you're thinking about a lot at the same time, just slow down. Because slowing down is really actually it's really important. So I guess that's how you would more or less overcome it. I feel like that's that's like a method to do whatever you do in life. Like sometimes taking a break from everything is important. Like I see people who actually work through chaos, like having a lot of things helps them remain productive. But sometimes just taking a break, whatever you want to do, bro, whatever it is, school, school, relationships, friends, if everything just becomes too much. Just plumb out, dog. Just kick your feet up, watch a movie, mm -hmm. sleep. What do you mean by relationships? No, like there's people out there who really have bad relationships. Like. Yeah, yeah. You're not used to be together. You're coming. Ah. I don't believe in that. Why do you say that? Can I help you? We, we, we. Let it. I just go and sleep, guys. That's all. Thank you. You see? Let's go back. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, I I was saying. What did you mean? What a bad relationship? No, the no, I was. Thought you made me the face of a bad relationship. What the fuck are you talking? This guy's happy. This guy's. So I know you've been talking about. This guy's so in love. Like, don't seem like this. This guy's so in love. But me, I'm saying. What the fuck is wrong with me? I'm saying like this. I'm honestly, this is right now. Sorry, I'm saying. Going. I'm saying there are people out there with relationships that have constant up and down. It never makes sense. There's never peace and everything like that. And I'm saying, in the sense of that, 
sometimes you just need to take a break from it because speaking from xp speaking from xp a bad relationship would flip, would flip and throw your world upside down <laughs> Do you ever believe free? Like if you, your partner is going to wake up, you guess you're going to get together. It depends. Mm-mm. It depends. It depends on, on, on the situation. Like, if you're taking a break, you have to take a break from the final bit today. I know. No, like, let's say, because I think you, you can't. So give yourself your 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 your
okay, this and this, okay, I'm not telling you what's going on, but something is going on, and I don't feel like I'm in the right space to speak about it, so I'm letting you know that's probably my girlfriend. What if? That's not her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Leo, it's my boy Leo. What if, like, in that situation, it's like, you want to process what you're going through right Yeah, and then she takes it. Yeah, and then, yeah, but what if she doesn't take it as a thing of, okay, oh. let, me, let me give him space. What if it, to her it just feels like, that I'm actually not getting enough to speak like that. Okay, I wouldn't say she's being selfish, but it's being yeah. selfish, because right? nothing about you. I feel like, that's okay, at the beginning of the relationship, because I was going to say, all right, I'm going to say, all right, but at the beginning of the relationship, when you still like, when you still fresh and be like, I need my space and stuff like that, I'll give you that. But if we are like months in and you still not comfortable telling me what your issues are, that's, that's then I'm gonna start to think and be like, why aren't you comfortable telling me issues? If we are months in a relationship, means you don't trust me emotionally, and if you don't trust your partner emotionally, what's the point of being with them? What if you're overthinking the time? You are the girl overthinking the time. Expecting it to come within months, but it's like, oh, he's gonna come up there, yeah. Because I'm not sure. 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 i am not sure 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 i
to each other and just understand that okay, my ways are just not perfect. Okay, this is what I, this is what you just said. It's about compromising, but you said you're also an overthinker. How? What are the chances that an overthinker can compromise in a relationship? That's an overthinker, man. I don't always. Okay, firstly, right, man. I'm very aware of. <laughs> I'm very aware of the people around me, right? And in a relationship, not that I'm a people pleaser, but I'm very much. I always put my partner before, like a partner. You understand? Like, even if I'm going through something, I'll call what I'm not going through for my partner. So that's an overthinker, and I put on myself a lot. So I can overthink something. Like, okay, you kind of overthinking. Let's calm it down. You not. It's not exactly how it is. But in situations where I'm going to do that, I'm going to ask them, okay, what is going on? You understand? Are overthinkers really the best candidates to be in a relationship with? Because let me put it, let me put it to you like this. Say you and your boyfriend, you're in an argument or whatever, mm -hmm. and he raised the Tyler raised a good point. He was like, "What if you're timing? Like it's just, like it only works for you." Say you're saying, but then yeah, you need to be able to be able uh, to open up. What if the guy say, "Well, that year just wasn't enough for me." Why wasn't I feel like with certain people, it's not sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay, let's say this name. What? What time do you need to open up to be able to open up to someone? What's like the time and how long is your relationship? Maybe. Maybe. Don't you think that there just isn't a timeline? Maybe you're just not. There's no timeline. Maybe you're just not. No. The partner should really come to me to open up to me. Nah, it's like, no. So if you haven't, okay, using your logic, if you haven't created that, that um, opportunity or that space for comfortability for your partner because of your, well, just, in, just for this example, lack of understanding and maturity, how do you go around it? Oh, please, I got distracted. I'm sorry. If I don't think overthinking is okay. What? Let's let's just ask a question. Yeah, it's cool. So much episode. Ask your question. So much time. In the next episode, we got this. No. No. <laughs> I just, my my person was it was so smart, and then like it just kind of went off road. Okay, right? I yeah, yeah, so just ask. I think the confusion is just, I don't think, oh, like, your overthinking is going to have to stop at some point. Like, you're going to have to put that down. Wait, no, no, let me tell you something. Let me ask you something. How long? I'm going to make this sound better. It's not even about, I don't know. If you're an overthinker, right? When your partner does Let me rephrase. To put you at ease, the overthinking comes down. You understand? So, don't leave things vague. Because if you leave things vague, you don't, or like some like inconsistency, I'm going to overthink those things. So if you're yeah. very honest and frank with Take anything that you do or say, then the overthinking will come down. I won't have the time or the space to overthink. I have a question. I have a question. Okay, let's say you as the overthinking that. You're overthinking this thing, these things that like your partner is doing. Like, but then you do them unconsciously. Why don't you overthink what you're doing? Like, oh, I'm doing this for my partner. Do we really overthink or do we self-diagnose? Because you know how far overthinking actually takes you. Like, have you seen a real overthinker? That's okay. So then, how do you tell me how you humble yourself if you were an overthinker? I'm an overthinker, but I'm too self-aware of myself, right? Because I'm very critical of myself and everything that I say or do. So even though I overthink a lot of things, I'm able to be like, okay, maybe you are overthinking it. Maybe you need to calm down. Maybe it's not as deep as you think it is. You understand? But also, as a person that I'm not in a relationship, because I let you know I'm overthinking, there's also some expectation for you to do certain things or say certain things to help calm out the thinking. So, within the beginning of the relationship, there's already an expectation line. Not even expect Okay, for example, but this is the basis, right? If you say one thing and act another, are you not going to overthink it? I'm going to overthink it. So, you as someone, your actions should align with what you're saying, so that I don't overthink your intentions with you. I don't overthink what you're saying, what you're doing. Okay. 
So basically, yes to what I just said. What is it? It's an expectation. Yeah, it's an expectation. It's a general expectation. It's okay to have. Okay, if I as an overthinker say something and then do something different, I'm not gonna shit. Okay, I'm actually doing. I'm saying one thing that makes another. The same way you as a person, if you date someone and they say, oh my gosh, I like you, or oh my gosh, in my relationship, I do want to do with my partner, and they don't do it for you, I'm not gonna overthink it. If she says in a past relationship, oh my gosh, I used to cook every day for my partner, and she doesn't cook every day for you, I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm not even be with such a woman. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm gonna just put that out there. Okay, what's the problem? Let's say they say, oh my gosh, I put my partner every day, and she doesn't cook every day. What are you gonna think? Girl, not to say it, I would never be with such a woman. My girlfriend actually did text me. <laughs> okay, here, here. Hi. Hey. Hey. Sorry, like, we like, need to rub it in my face, it's right. But, like, my is just not there yet. I feel like that's the best way to close this episode. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, I feel like we, we said a lot. And the closing point that I want to say is um, relationships are really complex. They're amazing. No, they really are complex. We'll talk about it in this episode. Okay, exactly. get a girlfriend. All right, as a man, get you. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, "He who finds a wife, not he who finds." Oh, that's this is actually for the next episode. Because the Bible don't talk about dating; it goes straight to marriage. This is about courting, then marriage. See that in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, shall we? We'll discuss it in the next. Wow. Thank you for tuning in. Wow. For this episode four. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Um, we have more in the way. Um, if you if you haven't tuned in, it's V46 Thursdays now, not V46 Sundays. Um, make sure to follow Tato, 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 me. Tato is a TikTok guy. But anyways, V46 loves me always. Bye guys. Bye.